What's good, y'all? It's your man Sight, and today I'm gonna show y'all how I take a sample bass loop, turn it into multiple sequences, put it into song mode, and arrange it into a way where it's a complete song ready for a vocalist by the time we're done. Let's get busy. All right, welcome back to the lab, y'all. Once again, my name is Sight, and I make videos about creating dope music using the MPC, as well as other tools for producers and content creators. So if you like this content, feel free to hit the like button down below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Now going through a lot of the comments in MPC Gang, which is our Facebook group, if you haven't joined already, make sure you check us out on Facebook, just look up MPC Gang, we'll pop right up. And it's basically our community of MPC producers, and a lot of the comments I get in my videos, as well as in the MPC Gang group, have to do with taking a basic loop beat and expanding it into a full song that an artist can get on that's interesting and gives them different ways to kind of flow on the track. So there's a lot of techniques you can use, I have a few that I go to on a regular basis, but there are a couple that are kind of new to me that I'm working on as well, and I'll show them all to you on a recent beat that I did. Let's go ahead and check it out. Alright, so I started with this uh, Miguel sample. I'll play it for you real quick. Just a real basic loop uh, made off of the Miguel Adorn song and I thought it was really cool so I wanted to kind of make it into an entire beat and I did add some drums and stuff to it. Let's go ahead and check that out with the drums. I went ahead and laid it out into a full beat and it sounded like this. Now as you can hear, it's a pretty dope loop. I added a cool little bass line using my standalone tube synth 808 pack, which you'll see up here. And I really liked the vibe. I thought it was really dope. I could hear someone rapping on it or possibly singing on it as well. And I thought it was a good start, but it definitely needed some variation or it was gonna get really boring just looping it over and over again. So the first technique I wanna talk about is filtering. Filtering is when you take the loop and you put it through a filter and you kind of make it sound a little bit different. Now there's a lot of ways you can do it. Uh, some people actually use gross beat or glitch style effects. I personally don't have gross beat, but I do have a glitch effect that comes with reason. And I'll show you what it sounds like when we kind of put it in there and mess with it. All right, so I'm gonna take it to the software screen so you can kind of see the plugins that I'm using. Now I recently upgraded to Reason 11. And the cool thing about Reason 11 is that it allows you to use Reason as a rack uh, as a rack unit, which you know you can add individual effects and you can use all the special effects that are in reason So it does require right now. Uh, it's a vst3 which MPC doesn't support. So it requires this blue cats patchwork uh, Plugin as kind of like an intermediary to get it to work So we're gonna use synchronous which is their multi-effect plugin kind of similar to like a gross beat or something like that um, Halftime you can do different stuff with it. You can do different timing effects as well as filters with it. So Let's go ahead and try a patch out here, um, which is stumbling sight gate on synchronous. So let's go ahead and check out the loop with the glitch effect applied. <laughs> Sounds pretty cool, but once we add these drums in, I think it's really gonna pop. Let's check it out. Let's go. Definitely digging that. So that's two sequences down already on a roll. Now another technique is to change up the drums. There's a lot of ways to do it. You can add a whole new drum kit if you want. Uh, what I tend to do is I like to load a few different open hats. And when it comes to kind of like modern trap type stuff like this, I like to use multiple hi-hats. I use one lower hi-hat and then one kind of higher pitched one, which will do like a lot of the dancing and a lot of the rolls and stuff like that I'll do with the higher pitched one. But in this one, I think we can take the main hi-hats out. We could just leave in the open hats and it kind of gives it a different vibe. And we're gonna take out the glitch plugin again, just changing the hi-hat patterns up. Now 
Now, as you can hear there, it kind of gives it a different vibe because the hi-hats can really dictate the flow when somebody's rapping or singing. So by taking the hi-hats out, you kind of allow the vocalist a little more freedom to kind of bounce around and just do their thing. So I think it's really good to take hi-hats out and kind of change the pattern on them every couple sequences or so. Of course, dropping hi-hats out is nothing new. It's a long time, time-tested technique, but I highly recommend doing that if you want to get another variation in. So now we have three variations of our beat. We've got a main sequence, we've got a glitch sequence, and then we've got this reduced hi-hat pattern sequence, which kind of allows the vocalist to get busy. But in this particular beat, which I kind of hear going R&B-ish, I wanted to add a little more variation. So I went ahead and added a synth part and I dropped out the main loop. Now this one was cool because I actually just pulled up Pad Perform. And one cheat code that I'll use to find the scale is I'll open up Pad Perform and I'll put the note highlighted here, you'll see it's an F, but I'll just go through different ones and I'll find the note while the beat is playing and that'll give me my root note. And then also you can change it from major to minor and kind of see which one hits the best. So um, you can mess around with these until you find the one that kind of fits, but this one was in an F major scale. And now all these notes are on key and I just came up with a pattern that sounded like this. That bounces crazy. All right, so now I'm really vibing. I wanna add a little more to that sequence. I do like the little staccato synthesizers, but I went and found a couple just random sounds from different kits, kind of sound effects. Um, I, I believe I found these in the Tim Kelly expansion, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I went ahead and added a couple sound effects. I'll take the synth out for now so you can hear the sound effects. Kind of like a coin dropping. So nothing fancy, just a couple sound effects to kind of add a little swag to the beat. And you know, you just go through different sounds and kind of pick them out. So yeah, now we're up to four sequences. I feel like it's good to go. And normally what I'll do for a hook is I'll add a bunch of the elements together. I like the hook to kind of be big and more bold. So I'll take the main loop, put it back in. I'll add some of these elements back in and that'll be our chorus. So let's check it out. So going back, I decided not to put the synthesizer part in that breakdown sequence. I decided to take that out, just keep those sound effects that I just did, and add a riser at the end, because I wanted this sequence to be the one that led into the hook. I wanted it to kind of break down, and then when the hook came back, I wanted it to be everything just big and dramatic. So I added a riser at the end using a riser plugin, which comes free with your MPC software. If you haven't downloaded it and you use the actual software, not just the hardware, I highly recommend to download the riser. It has hundreds of patches, and it's really dope for creating buildups to your next sequence. So let's check that out with the riser put in. Real quick guys, if you're getting value out of this so far, do me a huge favor, hit that like button down below, and don't forget to hit subscribe if you're not subscribed already with the bell notification so you'll get an alert every time I put up a new video. Thanks y'all, let's get back to it. All right, so we're grooving, we got our sequences rolling. Let's go ahead and go to song mode and start assembling this thing and see if we can put together a nice little rhythm for it. All right, so song mode, make sure I'm on bank A. You can see all the loops here. And this A5 one up here is actually the glitch one that we just did. So quick cheat mode for song mode to assemble it is hit the overdub button on your MPC. And now when you punch these pads in, it's gonna put it into the song. There's two ways to do it. You don't have to hit the overdub button. You can also manually hit the insert button here and insert sequences one at a time. But with some real gangsters, we're gonna do it the G way, all right? So let's go ahead and punch it in. I think we wanna start with, uh... oh, one thing I almost forgot. Let's make an intro, which is usually pretty simple. I usually pick one of the sequences that I think would sound good without drums. I take all the drums out. Sometimes I'll take the bass line out, but definitely take the drums out. And that'll be our intro and kind of build up to the track. So I went ahead and duplicated uh, this number five sequence, which is the glitch one. All right, and then I just went ahead in the track mute, turn all the drums off. All right, cool. That's gonna be a cool sequence. So we'll go to song mode once again. 
I'm gonna go ahead and hit overdub and bang. Punch in that intro, which is A6. And then we'll go right into the main loop. Then we'll go into main loop two, which is the one that has the hi-hats taken out. All right, then we'll go to the breakdown, which is the one that's gonna be the build up to the hook. And then boom, hit the hook. All right, and we're gonna do the hook twice. All right, so you see it added two on the number of playthroughs. All right, and then uh, maybe we'll go back to the glitch one. Main loop two, breakdown, hook twice, and we'll end it out with the intro again. So as you can see, you can really build up the song very quickly in song mode. If you lay out your sequences properly, give yourself an intro, give yourself about three to four variations. Sometimes two or three will do. But once you have it laid out, it's really quick to punch in your song format. And you can always go back and change it. But let's go ahead and convert it to a sequence. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit convert to sequence here. And I like to put it on track nine. I mean, sequence nine. Include muted tracks. Do it. All right. And now when we look at nine, we've got the whole thing here and a full everything that we punched in laid out in a full sequence. And this is cool because the last thing we're gonna talk about is the mutes. Once you have your track set up here and you still wanna add additional mutes, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. It's best to do it this way in my opinion for kind of customizing the beat with the mutes. You have the whole song basically laid out in a full sequence and now you can just go into individual tracks and put your mutes in and it's non-destructive. You can take them out if you don't like the way it sounds. It's just really easy to adjust. So let's go ahead to the screen and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so at this point, I like the intro and I like to go ahead and add my tag on an audio track. I don't really use audio tracks that often, but it's cool because they're right here and you can just drag it in. I'll go to my browser. Got a tag folder here and I'll just hit a random pad and load it in. All right. And then what I'm going to do is go back to the software screen and go ahead and hit the audio track here. All right. And then we're just going to drag my tag right into the audio track. Uh, we'll put it on seven. Let me see what that sounds like. It's a little fast, so let's go ahead and warp it. All right, boom, sounds good. Got it dragged in there, warped it so it sounds good. And let's go ahead and play it from the top. All right, so right there is where I would want to drop out the drums right before the hook starts, right? So the hook starts on 33. So I would say bars. So maybe that whole bar, 30, well, so let's say 31 to 33, we want to mute out, right? Mute out the drums. All right, so I'm going to come up here. I'm going to hit the automation button here. Take this down to mutes and as you see the mutes that we already had just based on the song mode that transferred over are already here right so i like to hit this block i like to take it off pencil all right and double click and then i'm going to go ahead and drag that and i'm going to turn this time correct to let's turn it to eight all right and that'll make sure it's easier to get the, get the bar rate on point you can put it on full bars if you want all right so do it there. Do it there. Do it there. And 
We'll drop out the hi-hats. Mm. Yeah, we'll drop them out too. Cool, cool, I like that. All right, so we like the way that's flowing. Now say bringing in the second verse, we want to, uh, let me see, it's 33 to 41 is gonna be one. And then 49 is we're gonna bring in the second verse, right? So say at the second verse, you wanna start it with no drums. We just do the same thing. Double click it, drag the mute. Uh, let's say we skip out the drums for the first four bars, all right? So let's do that. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, that's cool. It leaves like a little room for the vocalist to kind of stand out in the first part of the second verse. So that's cool. And you can just go through your track and kind of just add these mutes, you know, to whatever part you feel makes sense. So you can drop out the main melody, you can drop out the bass line. I do like to drop out the bass lines too. Actually, let's try that in the beginning of the second verse. We at track eight is usually my bass line, so let's go ahead and mute that. Let's see what that sounds like coming out of the hook. So as you can see, it's not really that difficult to arrange in the MPC. Once you kind of convert everything to song mode, you just go in and add those mutes. Mind you, you can also go in and delete those if you want, but I like the mutes because it's not destructive and you don't have to worry about losing that and having to reprogram it or anything like that. All right, y'all, so I hope that helps some of you guys out. It is a process and it does take time and experience to kind of develop the skills. And don't forget those glitch type plugins can really add a lot of variation with just a couple clicks. I also link a card above and in the description that shows one of my videos where I walk through how you can create a halftime effect inside the NPC and standalone. So you actually don't need to buy additional plugins. There's other ways you can kind of get similar effects. And as always, I appreciate everybody who supports the channel by copping the NPC gang merch. That's also available down in the description or on my website, imsite.com. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you haven't done so already, check out this next video.